So today we are going to be talking about MTTSA. So what is MTTSA and what is the principle of it? So first we're gonna uh, go into the detail of the protocol and then I will uh, give you a detailed perspective of each step, like why and how we're gonna do it. So first of all, the seeding. This concept of seeding is that we need to seed a few cells in our place so that we could do the same uh, number for every experiment and then we could see that if individual experiment have similar results or outcomes. So the purpose of doing this is to keep the cell number uh, constant so that uh, the outcome, variation in the outcome could be analyzed. So if there is some variation, we would know that it is some kind of error or something because we are already keeping the number of cell constant. So it is not actually the exact number of this but rather it is like a estimation of the number that we are going to use so first of all for example we use this number for entity uh, and the number of the cell also depend on the uh, plate that you are using so for mttsa we use 96 well plate so if i show you on uh, like internet like uh, over here, if you go on Thermo Fisher Scientific, you can you can use this data. This is very very useful for our experiments. Like they have told us about each dish or uh, culture plate, like how much uh, cells we need for uh, each kind of plate. So, for example, over here we are uh, over here we are having this ninety six well plate and they have told us to use this much cell density so this is what we usually use but for me i used a bit lesser than this one but this is this is just like a uh reference for you you can change according to your requirement or if you think that if you have some reason to change it so they have like did it on Hella cells and then they have given us this reference to use. And for other things as well, like for growth medium, for each plate, they have like some reference. For example, you can choose uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 ml of the growth media for this plate. So you can find a variety of information from this website over here. You know that we have done the seeding into the well plate. After that, we are going to incubate it for for a whole day or 24 hours. So uh, so the reason why we do it for like 24 hours is that because the cell cycle is estimated around like 24 hours. It is not always the same. It radiates for cancer cells and normal cells. But like we, it is not a specific or exact time that you need to follow, but estimated around 24 hours. So after that, um, you can do your treatment. For example, for me, I did with vitamin C. I could show you some of the information, like, uh, like in here, if you see in one of my paper over here, we have used like a variety of treatments. So uh, for this one, we have used vitamin C and dissolve it in uh, media to uh, make these different kind of concentrations. And then we use these concentration to put them in each uh, plate. This treatment, for, for instance, for my case, it was one hour of treatment. And after that, I just change the media because it is very important to change it because otherwise your uh, treatment is going to be longer than one hour because uh, treatment is going to be inside the uh, plate. So we have to remove the media and replace with the fresh one. Uh, and after that, we are uh, going to leave it for another, like uh, for me, I used to do it like leave it for 18 to 20 hours after removing and incorporating the fresh media. I'm gonna leave it for 20, around 20 hours. And after that, I'm going to have this MTT reagent. 
and I am going to use 0 0.5 milligram of this reagent. So how I'm gonna make it is, so this MTT reagent, it is very reactive to various uh, components. So to avoid its interaction with other reagent, we usually use uh, serum free media. For example, I in my experiments, I usually use TMEM. So uh, I made this concentration in serum free TMEM, and then I incorporated uh, like 100 or 200 microliter in each blade like this. And after incorporating it like this, I put it in the incubator and then we can incubate it for three to four hours. So actually these are kind of like uh, um, not constant thing, like you can do it for three hour or four hour, but if you are using three hours, you have to keep that incubation time constant. And if you are doing four hours, you have to do it four, uh, four hours for every experiment. So whatever you are using, you have to do the same for every other experiment so that the uh, so that your replicates have uh, no variation and your results are more similar or more close to each other. So the um, principle of using or principle of uh, this reagent is that this reagent is yellow in color. And when we add it into our place, which are having cells in them, that uh, uh, MTT reagent is going to go into the mitochondria of the cells, and in mitochondria there are some reductase enzymes which are going to convert this to a chemical reaction and convert it into a another reagent, another uh, substance which is formazine, and these are actually insoluble, so they make like crystals inside the cell. So now we are having purple color inside the cells. And because they are insoluble, uh, so after two hours of incubation with, uh, I use two hours, but you can choose like three to four hours, whatever you want to use. And after that, um, after that incubation, we're gonna solubilize those crystals with the MSO. So as I mentioned, these formers and crystals are insoluble and they require to be dissolved. So once we use DMSO, for instance, for me, I use uh, 100 microliter of DMSO. So after using 100 microliter of DMSO, it's going to, uh, it's going to be having purple color in the plates. And then we're gonna use a microplate reader to check the absorbance and then we can detect the difference between um, cells who are viable and which are dying. So, for instance, let me show you. So, for example, like uh, this is the just take an example. This is the plate that is your control. This is the these are the wells that are controlled. And these were, are having, for example, one millimolar. This is having two millimolar, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is like 12 millimolar, for example. So now you can see the difference between 12 millimolar and the one millimolar or the control. You can see that the purple color is almost fading, almost completely fading away uh, after using uh, MTD or after dissolving the crystal. So why it is happening is because uh, here the cells are not having any treatment and they are um, fully functional. But when we increase the concentration of our treatment, the cells are dying now and they are dying and they are no longer viable. Or you can say indirectly that their mitochondria is not functioning. And obviously the mitochondria is going to be um, damaged then obviously the cell is going to be dying. So the cells are dying or cells are not viable. So it means that uh, now the uh, cell viability is decreased over here. So that's why the MTG reagent, which was uh, yellow in color, is unable to be converted into purple color um, by mitochondria.
and thus we can analyze this data by microplate reader and we can know the difference in uh, the viability which has occurred because of the different treatment protocol. So we can check, we can just put this one in the microplate reader, which is a machine that we use to uh, check the intensity of this color. So the more the intensity, the more the um, cell viability is. So as you can see in this picture, like MTT reagent is outside, it's gonna go inside and it is going to be converted into crystals and these crystals are actually showing the how much cells are wiped. And if you want to know how to do this seeding step specifically like how to count these many cells and how to incorporate them into your well, wells, I have made a separate video on seeding. Maybe if you want to uh, check it out, it will be helpful for you. So if you have any questions uh, regarding it, please comment below. I will be happy to answer them. And one more thing that uh, when we do the treatment, some people also like to wash the treatment. For example, they have removed the treatment and then they wash it one time. Washing means like just putting the fresh media and then removing it again. So that step, they just call this the step as washing. For instance, uh, if you have multiple treatments and first you did one treatment and now you want to do the next treatment, so you should wash the uh, cells first and then you should go with the uh, second treatment. But the thing is that I also, the problem that I also faced was like, uh, uh, there was a lot of cell uh, loss specifically for my cells that I was working on. So the thing that uh, the thing with washing is that you have to be very careful, otherwise it's gonna wash away all your cells. So you have to be very gentle with your pipetting, otherwise if you're touching the bottom of the plate and you are removing and incorporating media multiple times, it's gonna wipe away a lot of cells and then your, and then your results will not be constant for sure. So you have to be very mindful of that. So this is the basic principle that how you do MTT reagent. And um, yeah, and for um, DMSO, uh, like after adding DMSO, you just need to like wait a couple of minutes and it's gonna be done and you can just go straight to ab uh, absorbance reading. Uh, and another thing that I forgot to tell you that about MTT reagent, you actually have to remove it first because the crystals are actually inside the cell. So you have to remove the media first and then you have to dissolve the crystals with DMSO. So the, uh, the uh, way I used to remove the uh, MTT um, media with MTT reagent, I just used to uh, put it upside down in the sink and that's how I used to like remove it by giving it a jerk in a sink and I got all of the reagent or liquid removed from my plate and then I just incorporate like DMSO direct. So I also have a separate uh, video on the last step of this one. So I have two videos like one of is one of which is on seeding and the next one is on the last step which which contains these three last protocols and for the treatment i have no video because it depends on every person like how they're gonna do it and how they're gonna proceed it so if you have any question further on this uh, experiment please comment below and so in summary the this essay is mainly used to see that how sensitive your cells are toward that particular treatment or how much uh, like um, sense cell sensitivity is toward that treatment or whatever. So it's kind of like very basic experiment that we probably use it in every um, study because when we are starting off, we need to know that how our cells are um, sensitive or how strong the cells are toward that treatment.
for example, if if your uh, treatment is not affecting at all, you're gonna need to increase the concentration um, of the treatment so that you could have a like a gradual. Um, let me show you, so that you could have a like a um, like a graph which is showing the decrease in the cell viability. So for for example, for my case, when in the start, I did this this experiment uh, with H4 cell line. I could not uh, get the uh, this um, like a trend because of the fact I was using too high treatment. Like I was using it up till 20 and the cells were instantly dying. So I had to reduce it down till four millimolar so that I could have a trend of gradual degree. So it, it is telling me that at what, what level the cells will start to die and how sensitive they are and vice versa for U87. Like if you see at four millimolar, only like 50 or uh, only like around 60% of cells are viable. So that's how uh, we get to know about the viability of the cells after treatment. So this is all about it. If you have any question, let me know. And uh, for the next video, we will be talking about uh, clonogenic assay and how to perform it and what, what are the complications. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.